Hi, I'm Scott Pinzon, a Certified Information System Security Professional at WatchGuard. You hear so much about spyware today, you might wonder if the threat is overhyped. So we asked some internationally renowned security experts about spyware. First up, Samil Shah has been a senior consultant for Ernst & Young and Foundstone. He writes and speaks extensively, teaching IT professionals in many countries about computer security. My interview with Shah began with the question, what are the realistic odds of the average person actually having spyware on his or her personal computer? Here are some highlights. The odds are very heavy. I would say an average Windows PC, I mean this time I'm using specifically the term Windows PC, that's because what the majority has, uh, give it a week or so and it's going to be riddled with some sort of malware, some sort of spyware. It's because we all suffer from this phenomenon called digital gluttony. We want to download the whole internet. Anything that's thrown at us, if it's on the internet, it must be true. So people just consume everything they see. The kid's going to download some music players which will go pull back to their favorite sites. I mean, pull back and report what the kid's doing. Online games. The shopping site may install some sort of um, you know, tracking system saying, hey, we have some new sales and it's going to give you alerts on your desktop sports score, score widgets or score trackers, follow World Cup football and you get all your live scores and matches. I mean, these may be, these may be decent stuff, but along the way, sooner or later, you're going to get, you're going to encounter people who want to offer you software for free. And in turn, they want a piece of your desktop. They want to monitor you, they want to own you and they want to see everything that you're doing and this data is going to be sold back and make a lot of money for them. So the whole ecology of, uh, of the lure of free software, the need for people to consume it and then back-end people who don't even get seen making money, piles and piles of money. I mean today as average adware or a spyware company is making anything from 10 million to 50 million US dollars a year with a staff size of around 50 to 100 employees working for him. It's, it's a growing business. It's just all depends on psychology. We want it all, it looks good, we take it. We act before we think and that's what's causing all this. Shaw pointed out that the amount of spyware infection we get individually depends upon what we each click on. But how much harm can there be in a single mouse click? To find out, live security analyst Corey Nockreiner purposely exposed a PC to a drive-by download. A drive-by download is one technique attackers can use to force spyware and other malicious software onto your computer. All they need is for you to visit their booby-trapped website. Here, Corey shows us the consequences of one very unfortunate click. Here we go. Bam! Did you see that? Neither did I. The page loaded normally. That's the scary part, because the drive-by download has already happened. Some attacks tip you off by crashing stuff. Other times, nothing visible happens. In this case, the malware loads stealthily, but then makes itself obvious. Here, I'll minimize my browser and show you. My desktop's wallpaper has changed to a message claiming I have a spyware infection. I also have a new icon in my system tray, and it also warns about spyware by popping up a message. If I click that message, a mysterious application called Spy Sheriff pops up. Guess what? I never installed Spy Sheriff. Attackers commonly install malware that masquerades as security software, hoping you'll pay their activation fee. If you do, the fake software doesn't clean up its own mess. It's kind of like, I rob you, I run away, then I run back up to you and I shout, You've been robbed! Pay me and I'll tell you who did it! 
Here are some other visual clues that a drive-by has hit your machine. Those are some obvious signs of infection. Now let's see what happened to my PC behind the scenes. Once an attacker gets his malicious program onto your computer, he typically leverages it to install all kinds of malicious junk. They generally use a loader program, which drives your computer to more sites to download more malware. Using a statistics feature in my packet sniffer, I can list all the websites my browser visited and specific requests it made. This shows me every file my computer downloaded from any website, including files the loader application forced my computer to download. Check out how much stuff happened. These are executable and other malicious files that were shoved down my computer's throat. And here are just some of the domains the loader program instantly sent my computer to. The drive-by download not only installed its malicious application, it also started a chain reaction that made my PC bounce all over the internet, downloading malicious applications. As you saw, this all happened instantly, without any visible clue. Let's recap. My browser landed on a corrupted website. With no interaction from me, a tool downloaded and installed, then forced my computer to make connections all over the internet, downloading malware applications. The applications took over my PC and did several things. Open backdoor access for the attacker, install Trojans to deliver ads and more malware, and turn my computer into a spam relay. So at this point, my test machine is spamming the world with several email messages that I, the user, do not see or even know about. How much garbage did the drive-by cram onto my computer? To find out, I ran three different virus and anti-spyware programs. LavaSoft's AdAware found 35 malware objects, mostly registry keys and values that had been maliciously altered or inserted without my permission. Webroot's SpyBot Search and Destroy found 77 malware objects. Some of these did overlap with AdAware's findings, but still, 77 objects? A great free antivirus package, AVG, found 89 infected objects. There's no point in showing you all the files, but for example, look at how much AVG found in Trojans alone. My test PC is now a cesspool of computer disease. Even with great spyware and virus cleaning software, to fully recover this PC, I'm going to have to reformat its drive and wipe it clean. Now you have some idea of how much trouble one click can lead to. And the bad part is, on a network, no computer is expendable. Once spyware or hacker tools establish a foothold on one machine, a skilled attacker can travel to other computers on the network, like stepping stones. This is skillfully described by Harun Mir of the South African security company SensePost. You've probably seen movies where companies test their defenses by hiring someone to break in. Well, SensePost does that in real life. In this interview, Mir reveals how compromising one seemingly unimportant machine can actually gain an attacker a company's most precious secrets. Let's take a look. Okay, so if the company's got a really smart admin who's patched their boxes and a smart router guy who's locked down their routing and a smart firewall guy who's locked down their firewalls, then it's probably easiest for us to find their secretary who's just written her password on her desktop um, if it gives us the same access. Um, the secretary angle is an interesting one because often you'll find a big company heavily focused on security and the CEO's right hand is his secretary who has all his access, access to all his documents, access to just about everything. And a lot of efforts put into making sure that the CEO doesn't leak information 
but nobody told the secretary that. And she's still downloading Fantasia.exe and still getting past all the corporate safeguards that are there, allowing you all the way into the CEO's office. Ultimately, I think the solution will come from a combination of those three. So you need some technology in place to make sure that people can't screw it up too badly. You need procedures in place to make sure you'll catch it if it does screw up. And you need your people to, to step up and start acting responsibly. If every computer matters and every click can matter, what can you do about the spyware threat? Your presenter is about to explain to you ways you can avoid spyware, but it all boils down to a simple concept. Think before you click. I will if you will. Thanks for watching.